Hey, I'm Jeff with WYSICOM. I'm here with Leslie, and we're going to talk a little bit about RF over fiber, specifically an application example of using the BFLT as a remote receive antenna with the MRK16. So for this example, you can imagine there's a dotted line down the center of our screen, and I am a remote receive zone. Leslie is a thousand feet away in our OB van or sound yep. cart, no, wherever it may be, yep. control room, and he is our MRK16. For this, you'll need a pair of antennas because we're working in diversity. So for this, we have an LFA and there would be another antenna going into BFLTs, two strands of single mode fiber into your MRK16 with the EX3 expansion module. Yeah. This is a very common scenario. I mean, talking especially about uh, since we released actually the MRK16, which is this you know, multifunctional rack unit that not only gives you the possibility of uh, using 16 wireless uh, channels in one RQ, but also talking about the RF part as multiple uh, RF inputs. So the basic you f yeah, use is to use these two inputs over there and you have two, a two zone metric. So typical scenario you can have in, I don't know, reality show, for example, you got the main area of the house and then the outside garden. One pair of antenna to cover the main part and another couple of antennas for the garden. Everything coming in. But then suddenly maybe the, the producer or the director or whatever shows up and say, yeah, you know what would be nice? Would be also the, not the outside garden there, but also there is a nice hill 500 meters away, one kilometer away, and we would like to do some shootings there also with some of the talent, some of the musicians, the artists, or the actors. So at that point, the options are, you know, reassembling another sound card or another sound bag to go shooting there, uh, pulling very long coax cable with massive loss problems and noise problems, or just, you know, take from the back of your band a couple of single mode fiber patches and just, you know, pull them out and, uh, yeah, pull the fibers on the other side and have an, a couple of BFLTs, which can run on also on a battery through the iROS connector. Yeah. So it can be a very easy to install a movable um, RF over fiber box. Yeah, and for the Americans uh, like myself watching, what even is a kilometer? <laughs> um, <laughs> But, you know, we, we, we talk about this in other times is, you know, in, in coaxial cable, you, you're limited to about 300 feet or 100 meters before, you know, the, the noise starts getting kind of un, unmanageable, the, the, the loss is massive. You know, we have active antennas, not to say you can't go 400 on coax, but there's an easier way. You yeah, know, especially in, in the example Leslie's using, there is likely already running a fiber cable out there for cameras to come back to production or to their video village. So they usually have a tactical multi-strand fiber. Absolutely. So you can take two strands and bring it right into your MRK. Yep. Um, so That's with, true. Yeah, so with this, we get into talking about, okay, well, how do we set this up? So right now I have my antennas plugged in. This is simple that way. I have the coax into the BFL and our fiber connections to the MRK, but we look at our settings and in our recently updated app, you'll see right now I've got one set up in IFB mode one, an antenna. You can do this in the app or the device itself. You wanna make sure that you're set into antenna mode. And this just manages the overall levels and, and some laser settings to get you the right thing as well as enabling to turn on the voltage output for your active antennas. Correct. Um, you also can set up filters for, for that part. That's also very, very important, that a useful tool that you got directly into the BFL. Because Visicom is known for his LFA's antenna, BFA's, IDFA's, so all the legacy of boosters, which includes also filters. And we basically took the same idea, same concept that just translated into the, transferred into the, the BFL deals. Uh, and this is, the, um, this is one of the very interesting aspect of this tool because you can use a whatever antenna on the other side, potentially, that yeah. works, of course, in the, in the right bandwidth, uh, and then use the BFL filters to just decrease uh, the amount of RF energy or interference that are coming into your system. And you also have a gain stage that can allow to compensate, if you're working with a passive antenna, can compensate a little bit of the loss that you might have due to the Cox cable after the, the fiber or before the fiber part. Yeah, because it kind of goes into the, the kind of three things we always look at with RF over fiber. And this changes whether it's a, a little bit, whether it's a remote receiver or, or local transmit over fiber. You know, the, that being, we say number three is, you know, your, your filter sets. With fiber, you want to, and this applies to coaxial as well for the most part, you want to bring in as little additional energy as possible. So if you're working with mics between you know, 500 to, to 560, 
you don't really need a VHF or 94960 or and, you know, other spectrum sets. So you can reduce your filter a bit and it'll help bring in less energy. You know, cut out the two-way radios, cut out the extra just noise that your receiver doesn't need and your fiber doesn't need. The second being, uh, really the most important, number one, being always keep, keep your fiber clean. And we talk about this in every conversation we have about our over, over fiber in video, in phone calls, in emails, in everything, it is always keep your fiber clean. You know, we say 90 to 95% of the issues people have are, you know, misdiagnosed because it's dirt on the fiber, whether this is, you know, just the oils from your finger or dirt that's very hard to see from your or naked eye. Or wrong connectors. Or wrong <laughs> connectors. <laughs> that's we another thing. Tell you, it's, it's all, it's noted on every device. It's all, uh, by default, uh, SCAPC for angle okay. polished. And if you don't know much on fiber, there's, there's typically angle polished and uh, uh, right UPC. Flat. It's uh, a yeah, flat, flat, yeah, polish. flat polish. Yeah, uh, I mean, the color coding of the connectors is pretty helpful. So if you plug in a blue connector into a green one, just maybe make yourself a question, is it or not the right Yeah, uh, and we're connector. talking about the, the green and green. Yeah, that's correct. Same with on the BFLs, green and green. Yeah, that's the thing. It's very important because it they seems they fit some of the time, because fiber has a lot of standards, so there is not just a couple of connectors, uh, various options. So it's important to be sure that you are on the right one. And single mode. And single mode, as compared to multi-mode. Yeah. And, um, and that's, that's a, you know, a lot of the very small bits, you know, that as we talk about it, seems like a lot, but once you get into it, you realize, oh, it's, it's a very, you know, get the correct cable the first time, and you'll be, you know, rocking and rolling, which, which kind of leads into our, our second point um, which has to do with uh, your RF optical levels. You know, when we talk about receive applications, we, we want to make sure we're not overloading our, our fiber input, much like we wouldn't want to oversaturate a receiver. No, you want to not the overload the rule. laser. Because you'll see on an analyzer, if you overload the, the laser input, your, your intermods and noise will just skyrocket on your receiver. So you want to keep that low. And you can do that with the attenuation in the receiver or with your active antenna. So when you're using an active antenna, you will likely not need, you know, plus or negative, you know, boost. You will more likely, and as I'm sure Leslie will say to you, in, in many applications, even with MATs and all of this, more often you're just attenuating zones back yeah, to bring in less absolutely. energy. Especially if you're working in multi-zone applications. Yeah. That's, the, the, that's the thing. I mean, we often say when you're working in multi-zone and wideband is, is fantastic because it gives you a level of flexibility that wasn't, is not possible in a regular, let's say, way, uh, but also brings some, some problems in that you need to know how to solve. One of those is having control on every single area. So also the, the fact that having, for example, two inputs here is very nice. But it's also very nice because you can switch on and off the two inputs. So the moment I don't need any more, the further zone up on the hill or the outside zone or whatever it is, I just switch it on because that is still serving 16, potentially 16 and more uh, wireless channels. So it's very important to be able to just switch it on and off uh, when it's needed. So yeah, yeah. this is the thing. And um, with, with the BFLs and using the MRK, one other thing you gain is going into the MRK menu by holding the encoder on the furthest receiver to the right, you can go in and you'll see a menu for expansion card. And within that, you'll see a handful of settings and information regarding the expansion, and you'll see your RF bars, and you'll see your optical level. And the BFL shows optical level as well. Uh, the, the BFLT has a four milliwatt laser. And so what you want to do is every, I think you said every kilometer is, is about 0.3 dB of loss. Yeah. And your minimum operative level is about a half, like a 0.5 dB in. So as long as you're getting that, you're going to be... Yeah, you're going to be fine. So that's, that's a value number that you have to keep on considering. I mean, the problem comes when you start to the point where you start using optical splitters and doing more complex stuff, I must say. So there is where the loss of the optical loss uh, goes away very quickly. Having loss on the fiber itself is very difficult. So yeah. I mean, it's very difficult to get rid of four milliwatts. Is a lot of power. It means a lot of distance. It, for, an, for anyone coming from other RF systems, you're used to with your body packs running 100 milliwatts or 250. You know, this is a very this is this is lasers. Yeah, it's if different. You've ever grown up with laser different pointers. Powers. You realize a very you know that the three dollar one you get at the at the junk store will still go two <laughs> miles down the way. Um, you know, so it's, it's, you know, as a troubleshooting step, we say, well, okay, after you've cleaned your fiber one, yeah. what is your optical level coming into your receiver? Yeah. More often than not, it's, you know, uh, with fiber, you can't do hard 
right angles. You know, a lot of people tend to not treat it. It's it's a piece of glass, it so is. you make sure you don't you don't crack it. Yeah, be be gentle with your fibers. Yeah, and there are a few tools out there that have you know high powered lights that you can run through and see exactly where your break might be or what's going on. Yeah, yeah. But that's pretty much it. Uh, this is the the really in good aspect about this setup. Uh, that once you, you you take care of this uh, small small or this uh, little amount of aspects, then you're absolutely ready to go. Yeah, and if you have any questions on this, on application designs, or really anything we can help with, for, you know, on anything, just send us an email, uh, support at wizzycom.com. <laughs>